Welcome to a black explanation of how fans have shaped baseball through the decrees they have chosen. If you open the League Info tab on the Blaseball website, you may have noticed the active rules and wondered, where did they come from? Why are they here? And are there any rules that are no longer active? All of these rules are the result of decrees voted for by fans across the seasons. So let's dive into history and find out how the fans made Blaseball into the game it is today. In season one, there were three decrees to choose between, and only one would pass, the one with the highest amount of votes from fans. Each had their appeal, but baseball fans, setting the precedent for always pushing the big shiny plot button, voted to pass Open the Forbidden Book. It passed with 61% of the votes and gave us access to the book, a heavily redacted set of rules for how baseball works. But it also introduced us to the consequences of our actions. We lost star pitcher Jalen Hotdog Fingers. The Moab Sunbeams became the Hellmouth Sunbeams, as the desert and their stadium were swallowed by the Hellmouth. And we entered the discipline era of baseball. Although we are no longer in the discipline era, choosing to open the book has been one of the biggest choices fans have ever made. We still have the book today, and it has been expanded but we also still face beloved players being incinerated. The book was to play a big role in a future election. Season two offered us five wills, with the two highest passing. Some vague, some very specific, and a repeat appearance from relegation, which was on offer in season one. Vague and support for the underdogs won out in the end. Peanuts got 36% of the votes and brought us Peanuts as snacks, Peanuts as weather, and worst of the bunch, the shelled one. This would have far-reaching consequences, resulting in fraud, blasphemy, the shelling of players, but ultimately the end of the discipline era, which was created by the season one decree. Meanwhile, Fourth Strike, which was only active in season three, passed with 25% of the vote. Of the teams it benefited, the Sunbeams came second last in the whole ILB, the Breathmints came mid-division. The Lovers made the postseason, but lost out to the Millennials, who won the good league title, but not the championship. So a mixed set of results. The season three election offered another five and two situation. Two financial decrees, one for game rules and two player related. The fans passed Eat the Rich and Interviews. These two degrees have had some of the widest reaching consequences of any past. Interviews got 33% of the vote and gave fans access to information about the players, their stats and their coffee order alike. Following on from the Grand Unslam event earlier in the season, this decree also caused the alteration of the Los Angeles tacos to become the unlimited tacos, who now existed in the infinite cities of Los Angeles. Two teams renamed in three seasons as results of decrees. Yet the microphone lifting also gave us the microphone on Twitter, who has been an important player in major plot events later on. Eat the Rich also passed with 33% of the vote and led to rejoicing as players would gain coins after the election taken from the 1% of richest players. As the economy has increased, so too have the payouts, with the season 17 payout at nearly 4,000 coins. But Eat the Rich was to cause more than rejoicing. When the boss took over the ILB at the end of season 10, fans noticed that Eat the Rich had not activated. Outrage abounded, and resulted in the Millennials legal team serving both the commissioner and the boss with a summons to trial. A trial which would ultimately result in the incineration of the commissioner, but a reinstatement of Eat the Rich. We move on to season four. Five decrees, two to pass. Fourth strike, which was passed in season two, makes a reappearance, and we see a second team targeted by decrees as the Pies, the early league leaders, were targeted in season three, and now the Tigers face their turn. 
but fans disinterested in repeating history or targeting just one team instead pass alternate reality and targeted shame. Targeted shame passed with 32% of the vote. Of the four teams it affected, all of them made the postseason despite this. The Tigers and the Millennials both lost out to the Jazz Hands and the Firefighters, respectively. These two teams made it to the final, and the Firefighters went on to become the ILB champions, which makes it a relatively ineffective decree overall. Meanwhile, Alternate Reality, which passed with 23% of the vote, is still having effects today. Originally, it called the alternates of two players on every team, randomising their stats. For some players, this was a stark improvement, but others, it was not so kind to. Since then, alternates have been available as blessings and now also as wills. It can cure a player of the attractor modifier, which is caused by being redacted, but was also the cause of chaos in season 16, when star pitcher Polkadot Patterson was alternated, drastically reducing their pitching power. Season 5 brought six decree options, with only one passing, but none had a description of their effects. Due to the use of good and evil in the names, fans theorised that these decrees would affect the leagues, but in what way it was unsure. Amidst much debate, it was high filter that would pass. With 26% of the vote, high filter saw the good and evil leagues become the wild and mild leagues. The new divisions were created by grouping the teams based on their performance in season five. The teams ranked first to fifth became wild high. Sixth to 10th were mild high. 11th to 15th, mild low. And 16th to 20th, wild low. Each division also gained a different blood modification from the bloodbath referred to in the decree text. To wild high was given blood pity, meaning that teams would have to give stars to the team that finished last in the division. Mild High got Blood Donor, where each team would donate stars to a team that finished behind them in the division. Wild Low got Blood Winner, where all the teams have to give stars to the winning team of the division. And Mild Low got Blood Thief, where teams would steal stars from a team that finished ahead of them. But before the end of the season, the commissioner tweeted that the bloodbath was postponed indefinitely and the modifications disappeared before we ever saw them in action. Since this decree passed, the leagues have remained like this, but as the result of some blessings, a few teams have changed, and every division gained a team during the Season 12 dissension. Season 6 was back to just three decrees. Enhanced party time was the winner. And with 77% of the vote, it is the most popular decree of all time. We got party time and the Miami Dale became the life of the party, giving them 10% higher boosts from their parties, a benefit they desperately needed at that point. Party time boosts have a huge benefit for teams, often sending them into victories the following season. It also introduced the tradition of the party time speed run, seeing which team can reach party time the quickest. The first speedrun record was set by the Tacos, who entered party time on day 78. The current record is held by the Ohio Worms, who entered party time on day 67 of season 13. Season 7 had three decrees, all aimed at the top four teams of that season, one in their favour and two against. Bless off one. Passing with 57% of the vote, Bless Off saw the four top teams denied the chance to win Blessings. This was mostly in response to the Crabs, who had the largest fan base at the time and so were dominating not just in play, but also in the elections, regularly winning multiple Blessings when other teams had none. This left 20 Blessings to be won between 20 teams. In the end, only 10 teams won any Blessings 
and the Fridays ran away with it, getting six for themselves. Season 8 had three options, two permanent game effects and one just for the next season. Wild cards passed. At 65% of the vote, it is the second most popular decree to date, and still in play today, seeing teams removed from party time to complete in the postseason. The Sunbeams and the Millennials have been chosen as wild cards together three times. Wild cards can dramatically shift the outcome of the postseason, frequently making it as far as the semis and knocking out teams that ranked ahead of them. In season 15, the Wild Wings as wild card made it to the final, becoming Wild League champions. Season 9 brought us another election of six decrees with no descriptions, but this time three would pass. The fans chose Birds, Blood Rain and Eclipse. As these passed, Birds with 52%, Blood Rain with 12% and Eclipse with 11%, emergency alerts were issued. This led to season 10 only seeing these three weather conditions. There were 356 Birds games, 314 Blood Rain games and 350 Eclipse games. Despite this, there were only two incinerations in season 10. Season 10 had three choices, all offering new reactions to in-game events. Black Hole was the chosen one this time. Having already experienced the Black Hole in the final between the Crabs and the Shoe Thieves, that decree passed with 50% of the vote, giving us not just Black Hole weather, but also Sun 2. These in turn have led to team modifications and ballpark renovations. In possibly the most hotly contested election, season 11, the first election post-discipline, offered nine options of what to do with the forbidden book, the one that was opened by decree in season one. None of them had descriptions, and there were fears that some may backfire. For example, there was concern from the sunbeams that closing the book would reverse the opening of the Hellmouth, and they may be returned to Moab. In the end, the three options that passed were Eat, Deface and Close. Eat was the most popular, with 47% of the vote. This decree revamped the economy of Blaseball, introducing concessions. Deface got 13% of the vote and brought us Wills, a way for fans to directly affect their team and a guarantee of change every season for every team. And Close, which got 13% of the vote, did not take the Sunbeams back to Moab. Instead, it ventured to Baltimore, where it gave us our first ballpark. These three decrees have created the biggest non-gameplay changes in baseball history, as we moved out of the discipline era and into expansion, giving whole new ways for fans to interact and more agency over their teams. Season 12 was back down to three decrees, all related to winning the championship. Based Evolution was chosen. It had 53% of the vote and was similar to a decree from season two, which also offered Evolution. This decree was seen as an alternative to Ascension and by far preferable as the team would not be leaving the ILB if they achieved it. The Tigers, who had won their third championship this season, evolved, joining the Crabs, Worms, Mechanics and Georgias. This grants them a team modification and each player has a guaranteed one star in every stat. Season 13 is another set of three, all with different merits, but fans of baseball have always been interested in helping the underdogs, so Free Wills was passed. With 53% of the vote, we saw the bottom four teams of the ILB, regardless of league or division, gain an extra will in the election. They only have it for that season, but it can even things up, although the decree text suggests otherwise. Season 14 had three concession-focused decrees. Each decree would change how the economy functioned, and there was widespread debate about which was the superior system. All you can eat one out, but mostly as an alternative to potluck. 
All You Can Eat allows fans to buy and sell snack slots, changing the value of the snacks in them. Four seasons on, there is still discussion as to the best way to utilise this system, but it does give fans more control over their income. Season 15 offered cool new gear. Each piece of kit would boost a different player stat, but which would be preferred? The answer? Bats. Every player in the league got a bat. This unlocked the items tab on each player page. Players with base one from Evolving had two available slots. Everyone else, just the one. The bats had different elements and some gave players modifications. Everyone's batting was boosted. From this point on, players could gain gear of any type, dropping the item they were currently holding. The bats were also good defence against consumers, but did get damaged in the process. These items influenced the decrees of the next two seasons. Season 16 asked the question, who do you love the most? Your team, your division or the whole league? Based both on community spirit and some hard maths that showed it would occur the most times, Community Chest was the winner. With 55% of the vote, Community Chest came into play. It activated twice during season 17 and twice in season 18, granting players across the league new items. Season 17 was exciting as it offered six decrees with three to pass. Three decrees were item based and the other three highlighted the lore of the game and new ways to interact with events. The winning decrees were Smithy, Library, and Fairgrounds. With 56% of the vote, Library was a clear favourite, offering access to the histories of Blaseball. It is mostly still redacted, but Loot Crates and the Boss are allowing access as time passes. Currently, two entries have been revealed. Smithy, with 11% of the vote, was given to non-post-season teams, even excluding the wild cards, and they are able to repair items. Fairground got 10% of the vote and gave teams the chance to win items throughout the season. We saw this happen five times in season 18. Now in the current election, fans are once again offered the big shiny plot button. Do they side with the reader over the boss? And at what cost? Are the other five decrees worth ignoring it for? We will find out on Sunday how the fans will shape baseball this season and what the consequences of our actions will be in return. Thank you for joining me for another Blaxplanation. I'll be back with more baseball fun and facts soon, but until then, rejoice, play ball.